You know, I'm pretty good with Raw as well, but uh, we're going to go into the Raw report in the next segment. But this, this was my takeaway from Raw, okay? All right. The show, to me, is objectively significantly better, okay? There's no 24-7 stupidity. There was only one bad finish on the show. The matches all got time. The matches were, for the most part, good to very good. But uh, here's here's the big issue, and this was only one show, so I don't want to, I don't want to say this is like a, this is a, a look at the future or anything like that. But I remember in uh, ninety four, ninety five, I first started watching UFC, and dude, it was awesome. And every few months there was a new UFC, and dudes were fighting each other. It was awesome, and then it became a sport. And it was still awesome for a long time. And then uh, we got Ultimate Fighter in 2005, 2006. And that show was awesome. Bunch of crazy, just totally nutty dudes in a house, going stir crazy, fighting each other, urinating in each other's salads. And uh, it was awesome. And then there was like uh, Tough 2, Tough 3, Tough 4, Tough 5, Tough 18, Tough 19, Tough, you know... Brazil versus Iceland, whatever. And, uh, you know, I just I was done with it. And then, you know, there's a UFC every single solitary weekend. And I know a lot of you like that, okay? But uh, for me personally, I also teach and train jiu-jitsu. So every day I see dudes rolling and, and like, bro, I need more <laughs> than just, hey, here's uh, here's seven fights with dudes you've never heard of before. Just a bunch of randos having fights. Like, I don't care! So here's my point. This Raw show was like, the matches were good and everything like that. But man, I'm watching that AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley match. It's going on for an eternity. It just goes on and 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 on. And then we're getting the main event and it's another 15 minute match. It's just going on and on and on and on. And, uh, and it really, it struck me that, you know, this is sports entertainment. And do I need to see the 24-7 guys chasing somebody through the building and doing it? But no, I don't need to see that stupid stuff. But this is supposed to be a variety show. And say what you will about Vince, and more so say what you will about his idea of what's funny and entertaining. But he did understand that pro wrestling was a variety show. And from day one, dude, go all the way back to TNT and the stuff in the 80s and Saturday Night's Main Event and... You know, the Attitude Era and all. I mean, he understood it's a variety show. You can't just do a bunch of good matches. There's got to be more. And last night's show did not feel like a variety show. Last night's show felt like, here's a bunch of really good matches. And I'm fine with good matches, but on a three-hour show, dude, I need some variety. I need something to spice it up to keep me awake. Because I was struggling on that show to stay awake. And, uh, you know... It's just, it was it was a weird feeling watching the show. I'm like, this is objectively better. I like more wrestling. I like longer matches. But I think it's the three-hour aspect and only having 30 yeah. minutes of content per hour. It just dragged on and on and on. But not well, in a bad way, just in a, in a long way. But that's why I can't complain about it is because at least I got the wrestling and at least Styles and Lashley w- was good. You know, up till the end, we're not not actually the end of that was fine. It was the the end of Drew and Kevin Owens, which that whole thing I thought was magnificent with Kevin Owens and them going back and forth with each other on the microphone. And then you have that match. The Usos obviously came out. They did it for storyline purposes with Kevin Owens being owed one now in his mind from Roman Reigns. So I thought the stories were good. I thought they did a good job. And yes, I agree with you. I think when the Muppet Show works. It works spectacularly, and when they do hit it off, it's great. But, you know, I'm not going to complain at all about this. Let the things dictate go the way that they're going to go and let the wacky kind of take its course however it takes its course. But I'm not going to complain about this. That show being three hours is hell. It absolutely is, but if it's not going to change, I would rather lean towards having a little bit more wrestling and having it be a little bit duller as opposed to what we've been getting. You know, the balance, obviously, they need to have a balance, and I hope they find it. 
Well, this guy's going, are we really complaining about more wrestling? It's not that there's more wrestling. Like, the issue is, you can have as much wrestling as you want, but the matches, if you can have, an, if you can have a show that's nothing but wrestling, like a pay-per-view, the matches have to all be meaningful. You can't just do a three-hour show with a bunch of long matches that are not meaningful. I realize that AJ and Bobby Lashley was for the, the title, but why? They announced it Monday afternoon. Hey, we're going to do a match tonight for the title, these two guys. And the main event is Dolph Ziggler and Theory for 15 minutes. Why? There was no reason for it. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Well, let's uh, do that Raw report here. There was actually a lot of good stuff on Raw. It was a third hour that was the issue, more than anything else. So the show opened up with a Judgment Day segment with Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, and Damian Priest. And uh, Damian Priest got to go out there and cut a promo on Edge for their match next week in Toronto. And he cut a hell of a promo. It's a very, very good promo. And they uh, they do their promo. Ray jumps him from behind. And uh, twice, Rhea Ripley got in his way. And he cannot bring himself to hit a woman, even though she's daring him to hit her. And uh, this allowed them to jump him, beat him up, put a chair on him, hit the coup de gras, lay him out, and uh, stand tall. So clearly we've got the, the uh, edge match with uh, Damian Priest leading to a tag match with these guys. And then whatever's going to happen with old Dominic. Not Dom. That's producer Dom. He's the only Dom that I acknowledge. Then we had Oscar and Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop and Nikki Ash. They went nine minutes. Pretty good match. I mean, it was actually, you know, for what I was expecting out of this women's tournament, it was a very good match. And Nikki Ash is no longer doing the superhero. She's just out there wrestling, although she still has the mask on. And we had uh, Bianca Belair at ringside. Bunch of near falls there at the end. And then uh, Bliss... Uh, knocks Nikki to the outside. Oscar puts Dewdrop in a wacky lucha submission, and she quits. And so Oscar and Alexa Bliss have moved on in the women's tag team tournament. We had a confrontation with uh, the baby faces, and then Bailey, Eo, and Dakota, which sets up their match, their six person match, which is coming up at the Clash at the Castle. We had a theory interview. Dolph Ziggler walked up. It's one of those things that they do. I talked about how, what was the point of this match in the main event? Well, they just shot an angle to do the match. And, of course, the angle is, you know, Theory tells Ziggler, you've never really made it to the very top. You're wasted potential, blah, blah, blah. This leads to the match. And, of course, Ziggler has, it's not his fault, but a lot of wasted potential here. He's just been some bloke most of the time he's been in this company. And so, really, they, they told us it's a guy that, you know, Austin Theory against this guy that never reaches potential. And that was the main event. And I was bored during the match. We had a Ciampa and Miz interview, which uh, they talked about AJ Styles. And this led to a tag match. Ciampa and The Miz against the returning Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali. They are now a team. And, of course, Chump and The Miz won, but they got 10 minutes. They worked the match to try to make you think that maybe Cedric and Ali could win. The finish was awesome as Ali goes for a 450, and Ciampa hits his running knee strike, hitting him out of midair, and he pins him with a fairy tale ending. It's a good match. Miz got a bloody nose. I think he hit his face on Cedric's knee. His knee was going, uh, Cedric was going for the Michinoka driver. That was a good match. We had uh, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens. This whole segment was the best thing on the show by miles and miles. McIntyre comes out. He cuts this great promo. Roman's not here. But you know what? You're not going to have to worry about no champion after this Clash of the Castle because I'm going to win the title. And here's a list of great wrestlers I can defend the title against. Starts rattling off these names. Does not mention Kevin Owens' name. So Kevin Owens comes out. He's upset that he was not mentioned. And he cuts his promo and says, you know what? There's a big difference between you and I. You walk around in a kilt. You walk around with a sword. You don't even know who you are. But you know what? I know who I am. And Drew is set off. And he cuts this fiery promo 
about how don't ever tell me I don't know who I am. I know exactly who I am. I'm the guy that 15 years ago they called the chosen one. Then I got fired. And I went out there and I busted my ass all over the world. And I worked and I got better. And ultimately, I never called them back. They called me. And I came back and I won that title multiple times. And you know what? I'm sick of all this talk. I'm a wrestler. You're a wrestler. Let's have a wrestling match. And this crowd's going crazy for this promo. And Kevin Owens says, let's do it. And they ring the bell. They had a great match. 15-minute match. Awesome. Until Drew sets up for the Claymore. And they they zoom in close. Because they don't want you to see there's going to be a run-in. Except you know when they zoom in close there's going to be a run-in. And you can also hear the fans going, boo, as he's setting up for his finisher. And so, of course, the Usos run in. And they attack Drew McIntyre for the disqualification. And uh, he makes his own comeback. Tells him he's coming for Roman Reigns on Friday. I mean, aside from the finish, this was awesome. And uh, I would have beaten Kevin Owens. It doesn't matter. He can still challenge for the title in a month. It's not going to hurt Kevin Owens to lose an awesome match like this. You as Triple H tell the fans, dude, most of the time when we do a match this long, you're going to get a finish. Don't condition these people to know that, man, we're going to give you good long matches, but if there are stars involved, you may not get a finish. Seth Rollins came out laughing. God, I'm sick of this laughing. Riddle shows up on the big screen. He's actually in the building. He rushes down to the ring. We have another brawl. Riddle lays him out and then challenges him to a match at Clash at the Castle. That's about where the great stuff on this show ended. Veer squashed Bo Keller, but he didn't. This Bo Keller guy kept avoiding stuff and outsmarting him. Then he got killed. I was like, what was the point? Just kill this guy. And then it was over. It's just like, it's over. You know? What are we doing with Veer? Can we we get going here? Dude, I've been watching this for months. Don't waste my time. Let's move on to something here. And we had an interview with Kai, Bailey, and Sky, and we talked about this and that. Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, 22, at times, glorious minutes, usually not. The match was fine, oh, come on. but it, it went on forever, and they there were moments where they're just standing there like somebody forgot a spot, and they're just looking at each other, which never happens in AJ matches. And it went on so long. I haven't seen this happen in a long time. It went on so long that they start they start doing near falls at the end, and it's two baby faces. And a guy goes for the cover, the crowd kicks out, the, the crowd boos. Guy goes for another finish, the guy kicks out, the crowd boos. They're like waiting. Can we get to the end of this match already and get on something else? So don't even yell at me about this, because this was the, the crowd was feeling exactly like I was. Get this match over with already. And finally. Bobby speared him, pinned him. Huge pop because it was over. (laughs) That uh, that went too long. And in the middle of this, by the way, they did the deal where Dexter Loomis showed up and jumped the rail and everybody goes after him. Security drags him off and we go right to commercial. I don't know why Dexter Loomis, who has the most non-shoot gimmick in the company, is doing a gimmick where he's trying to get into the building and it's a shoot. It's it's bizarre. Kota Kai beat uh, Dana Brooke. Title not on the line even though she comes to the ring with the 24-7 title. I have no earthly idea the point of this. It happened, and it was over. Just something to do on a show. Two minutes. And then the main event was, once again, Theory versus Ziggler. And uh, this was the main event of the show. There was nothing on the line. There were a lot of chin locks still by Austin Theory. They wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and wrestled and went to a break. And wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. And then finally, Ziggler goes for the fame asser. And Theory turns it into the ATL, or whatever he calls it. He pins him. He celebrates. The show ends. No angle. No what's next for old A-Town down here. Nothing. They just had a match. Like a WWE main event. Like it's a main event caliber match. It ended. And it was over. Okay. Hey, great first two hours. 
Third hour, yikes. That's my review. May I? Sure. Of course, it's your job. Talk already. The third hour, <laughs> you're not wrong about. And I thought the positioning of that match as the main event was crazy. And I know you don't want to give non-finishes in main events on shows, but I thought it would have been a lot more effective if Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens, and I don't know where that was strategically placed on the show. I was not keeping notes on that, where this was top of the hour, bottom, whatever it was. But I thought, in hindsight, that should have been the main event of the show with the Usos coming out there. You have Kevin Owens saying something. You have Kevin Owens' good friend, Sami Zayn, who he referenced in his promo leading into that match, still you know, in the mix with the Usos. I thought it was something that could have carried on to the next show. I thought that would have made a lot more sense. Theory and Ziggler, it's fine if you want to do it. It's giving Theory something to do. It's teaching him, obviously, how to be a little bit better working with Dolph Ziggler, but I didn't think it needed to be the main event, but they think he's a main event guy. I, I don't see it right now as of yet. I think you're being a little hard on Styles and Lashley. I thought it did go a little bit too long, but again, goes back to what I say. I will take that over a bunch of goofiness and having that match being you know a lot shorter than we would want it to be. Uh, Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander, I know you want to debut a team usually with a win. I'm okay with having them lose to Miz and Ciampa. If Miz and Ciampa, they're, look, I thought maybe you could turn Ciampa into something a little bit more of what he was, but he is leaning hard into this character. He and the Miz are a good team together. They really are. And if they happen to be a regular tag team, Great. Actually, I'm all for that being a foil, them being another heel foil. So it's not just Alpha Academy over there being that team. So I thought that worked out really well. You mentioned how cool the finish was. And I think when it comes to Dakota Kai and Dana Brooke, yeah, it was a match that just sort of happened, but I'll take that match because Dakota Kai got a victory. And this is what we've talked about with trying to build up some credibility with people. You're going to have to have some people that get a wins majority of the time, even if it's against people like Dana Brooke. But let's establish a pecking order here and Dakota Kai going out there getting a victory again being introduced more to the regular WWE fans who don't watch NXT, I thought that stuff worked itself out really well. This show would have been miles better if the main event would have been Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre. Because not only would it have been a great main event, but you're doing a run-in, at least a run-in's at the end of the show. Because by putting the run-in where they did, all of a sudden, all of those other matches, I'm like, God, there are 20 minutes into this AJ match. When's somebody going to run in? Yeah, I thought the same yeah. thing for the Ziggler match. It's like, you conditioned me early that you'll have dudes run in after a 20-minute match. So if you had had clean finish, clean finish, clean finish, clean finish, clean finish, clean finish, you do the big match at the end with those two guys having a great match, and then, yes, the Usos run in, but they did get beaten up afterwards. Drew McIntyre stood tall. Drew McIntyre says, I'll see you Friday. It's a cliffhanger, and you have the baby face standing tall at the end of the show instead of... Captain Briefcase. <laughs> great point. That is Theory. an absolutely great point. Yeah. And that's you're exactly right. Everything would have played itself out itself out better leading itself into SmackDown. Although I did watch the last night of the New Japan G1 and with the stories that were told there, I think they did a I would dare say did a much better job leading into the finals than WWE did leading into SmackDown. You know, I didn't mention the family, the Elias family photo, oh. but uh, I do want to mention that uh, Elias has been beaten up by Kevin Owens, and he's he's in the hospital now, and they say it's going to be a long time before he gets back, and uh, I can only hope. I know this is comedy, and they want to do serious stuff with Kevin Owens, Ezekiel. but I don't care. No. Elias is going to return. Ah. Full beard. Like and Kevin Owens is going to freak out and say, he's not Elias. He's Ezekiel. This was the best thing on the show, and uh, the show was all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on. To uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. Did I really see this? And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.